Uh, we are here on the IBC in uh, Amsterdam, my, uh, the town where my career started. And um, we just saw the new film of Ang Lee, who's done in 3D. And everybody's talking about 3D as uh, something that's disappearing. What well, is not the case? If you see this film, you know that it's not the case. Um, this film is shot at the end on 120 frames, uh, 4K laser projection and um, uh, 3D. And it will be the coming months also adjusted for HDR, the newer format where higher dynamic range uh, uh, is in play. Um, Ang Lee is a very, very uh, director with very intimate stories. So you would expect, why would he go into a 3D, what is more like a, a venue uh, format, until, until he started to use it. He used it in the film uh, Life of Pi, what was an, uh, some years ago now, but was a very successful film at the end, and where 3D was the format that was mostly what projected, and, uh, and most of the income of that film came from the 3D version. Um, Eng is, uh, while in, really a filmmaker, a, a, a filmmaker, um, he, uh, he, he wanted for Life of Pi another dimension because as a filmmaker as a storyteller he could not break the format of the book that uh, that uh, that uh, that was based on so he thought maybe i need another dimension mm -hmm. so he said okay uh, let me see and he saw some examples and he thought this is not this interesting and he just went for it he started to learn and he discovered mm -hmm. that a lot of people explained him how it should be done mm -hmm. but he, on the other hand he also discovered that nobody nobody that's what he said every time when he talked afterwards about mm -hmm. it really knew what he was talking about mm -hmm. and that the whole 3d format was in his in his uh, baby shoe so to speak the mm -hmm. beginning of the existence that the the language was not was really not discovered yet and not yet really used well and everybody did some something that that was was that was okay mm -hmm. but but nothing like what we have experienced in 2D, because in the 2D world, we create a 3D fake world using light, uh, backlight, uh, um, uh, dark and light and, and, and focus and all the elements that we are used to. They are not used in 3D so much. In 3D is more the, 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 the two eyes that are going further away from each other and, 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 and work with depth and create a depth there. So all the rules that were set up in 3D he, he discovered that there are rules that could be broken in a way, and that's what he did. So he learned very fast and as a director and had a very good team that also wanted to work uh, uh, in, 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 the, up, the, in, in the best way. They had this tiger that had to be built from scratch and, and there was a lot of green screen. So all these elements together were, were very new. So when, we, when I saw the result of that film, I, saw, I thought, wow, 3D is alive and 3D is, is, um, is, is, is working. The only thing, and that's the thing that has also destroyed the fast, uh, fast rise of 3D, is, was the fact that the technology of projection was very primitive. And nobody really uh, talks about that so much. Uh, they paid 25% or more for the ticket to go to 3D, but in principle they got 100% less light. Mm. And uh, and then also 50% less quality of projection. So so they they were cheated out. And people, John Doe, who goes to the theater with his uh, family, and I have had that experience in the Universal Plaza where I wanted to see a film in the 3D format and the 2D format. And in fact, I like the 2D format not because of the 3D elements, but pure that the quality, of the dynamic range, no glasses, and all the stuff was better than the 3D experience. So, Ang Lee now is uh, his other film that he brings out now that goes in premiere in, in December 2016 and in, in Europe in 2017 in the spring uh, goes in premiere in New York Film Festival. Um, he has jumped over all this stuff, so he has realized that that is the big uh, problem of 3D is that the quality is so bad. Um, um, the Hobbit was shot already on 48 frames and tried to do something with it, but on one way or the other, it, were not, it wasn't accepted very well. People talked about video loop, but it's nonsense because it has nothing to do with video. It has to be 
to do is the experience of reality, that you are more in a reality situation. So you have to get used to it. Every kid who does gaming and sits about this distance from two monitors has that experience. That is realistic. Uh, not realistic at all, but it is much more uh, visceral. Uh, and uh, that, that's why the, it's so successful, the, the, the gaming. But back to Ang Lee, when he decided to do this film, um, he went for the top, top, top quality. So he, he wanted to shoot in 60 frames, um, 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 60 frames, 3D, and then projected on laser, on laser projection, so that the, the amount of light would be twice as much for both eyes twice as much as a normal film projection. What means that, that you can work with tremendous contrast and a tremendous uh, dynamic range and suddenly the 3D becomes almost an invisible part of the story. That's what we saw. We, you saw it was very realistic. You saw details very, very strong. You saw enormous uh, um, clear the, 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 if somebody would act, wouldn't act very well because you could look in the eyes so well. So every doubt you would see. So you, it would bring you out of the, the, the trance of the story if you see that somebody's acting. So, so all these elements he has uh, taken by, uh, by the horns. And I must say the, in, the, in the small part that we saw, it was unbelievable how it came out of that. And, uh, and, uh, and the fact that he for the second time uh, a, a project takes on a, pro takes on a project like that and, and, and goes with a optimal uh, optimal quality techno technology technical quality and he succeeded. Mm -hmm. uh, I see some something that he never could have seen until the end when it was 4K where you, where you think oh maybe he wouldn't do that the next time but the, the, the guts to do it like that and the advent sorry the, 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 the advantages he got for, for the end result were, were enormous. Uh, I'm, I'm blown away by it. Um, not so much by the all the technology, but by a person who is in fact a non-technical person, uh, but with an artistic vision who uh, learns very fast in that sense because he wants to learn, and then uses the technology to bring the art forward. Mm -hmm. And normally the the artists and the filmmakers, the cinematographers, all these people slack behind. I try to. Uh, for the rest of my career, um, uh, now I have flipped from film to digital, uh, to to spend my time in improving the digital format. That's why I'm here, and also look at the VR, look at the HDR, look at the uh, at all the new technology. What's gonna what's gonna improve our storytelling? That's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. And um, would you like to work with the same equipment that he has used? Oh, absolutely. Now I would. Um, I would. Because I think that the, at that moment that he shot it, there was a, the, that was probably the only um, uh, camera that could really shoot high quality um, uh, 120 frames 4K, full 4K. Uh, I don't think there was any other camera who can do that. There was a Sony F65 that can, native can shoot 8K even. Uh, not uh, just get 8K out of the camera, but it's prepped for that. And, uh, I, the only problem of, of his system was that because it was it was with this, this big Sony cameras that it was uh, in fact uh, very cumbersome. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, if you make a dolly shot, you cannot do handheld. Mm -hmm. So that's also his wish that the uh, equipment would uh, would uh, would um, uh, become smaller, mm -hmm. and they become smaller all the time. Memory is becoming easier to deal with. Um, color is becoming easier to deal with. All these elements are at the same time uh, um, um, applicable up on, 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 on the 3D. Mm -hmm. It just, we have, we have, we, we, we are a little bit, uh, we left 3D behind us because we were cheated out by the, by the studios. Mm -hmm. We let us pay for 25% more money for 200 times less quality. Mm -hmm. and. People don't go for that. What's more important for the future, uh, 3D or uh, virtual reality? Um, what's more important for the future, 3D or virtual reality? Um, for the future, it's probably VR, virtual reality. 3D is an is an is an is something that you can do, and it has different formats. You can do 3D native with the, with the mirror and two cameras, but it's bigger and and it has its pros and cons. Uh, and uh, you can convert it, what's 
is uh, commercially completely viable because that's where China, uh, every, every theater, new theater in China is a 3D theater, it's not a 2D theater. So we have to deliver our, our um, um, big uh, tentpole productions in America. Mm -hmm. and we have to produce them knowing that we have to convert them to uh, 3D for China and for the, for the Far East. And that's what's happening. And that's where, uh, for example, a film made by Chris Nolan, who is against, uh, who does everything on film still. So his film couldn't, he didn't want to do it on 3D. They calculated that this film would have made 300 million dollars more if it would have been done on 3D. And that's something that is, uh, that you cannot ignore anymore. Mm -hmm. And um, we can say, oh, 3D is over. It's not over. Mm -hmm. we, there was a, there was a, there was an, uh, a, a tremendous uh, um, uh, rush for 3D, and uh, and I was part of that as well because it's, I did a film uh, called The Hole. Uh, Joe Dante was a director who had worked on 3D on film in mm -hmm. the 50s, and we made that film before Avatar. Mm -hmm. And in Venice Film Festival, this film got an award for best use of 3D. The first time an award was given for a film, like mm -hmm. a film, a 3D film. And, um, and I must say I'm very proud of that because it was my first time that they had to deal with a feature film that was done in, three, uh, sorry, in digital because 3D had to be done in digital. Mm -hmm. So from that moment on I made my switch for the feature part of my career to 3D, mm -hmm. sorry, to, uh, to digital with my first 3D films while in, in the documentaries with Michelle O'Hein, my wife, mm -hmm. as a director um, I had already done six years digital, so I was a little bit ahead of the game uh, for in relation to uh, 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 in relation to my colleagues who only worked in feature film mm -hmm. and who just later uh, got into uh, into the into the digital world. Yeah. And do you think this uh, Ang Lee film will be a game changer for 3D? Um, that's a good question. If Ang Lee's film would be a game changer, not a game changer. There's no game to change because the game is only improved. It is a game that exists. Um, it will not change. Uh, it will not change. Um, it will only confirm me. It only confirms that 3D is alive, especially because Ang just went for the weaknesses and and and, and conquered them. And this weaknesses with this format is over, and it is reachable because all the projections uh, he can now, having shot on 120 frames, he can project it on 60 frames in 2K. So every projector, almost every projector, um, is able to project on 60 frames, digital projector. And that was why the Hobbit could be distributed on 48 frames because every projector could be adjusted to 48 frames and can be adjusted, most of them can be adjusted to 60 frames. They don't have to change their equipment, they just have to have uh, change the software so that you can, they can project 60 frames a second. And that's uh, something that, uh, that, 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 will, that will confirm the, the, that, that 3D is alive and will go on. If it is native or not native, I don't know. I would not, would I have done it like that? I probably would have, but for certain scenes I would have uh, used a hybrid situation, uh, maybe, mm -hmm. but that is maybe not possible in a 120 frames uh, 4K situation, because to, to, um, to, to convert 3D on that level quali mm -hmm. of quality is a big deal. It's 60 times more work than mm -hmm. to, do, to do it on HD. So, so that would be six times more money. And it is already 10 million dollar of uh, what cost, uh, not Avatar, but the, the Titanic. When James Cameron changed the Titanic 2D to 3D, mm -hmm. it cost 22 million dollars. To do that, he got it easily back because the film had been such, such, such a success. But when I saw that, I thought, and when I heard that he was going to do it, I knew it was going to be good because he doesn't undertake anything that is not the best. So when I saw it, indeed, it was the next step of of, of uh, technology where you could where you could convert 2, 2D to 3D and believe in it as a 3D world. He was still in a bad projection situation. Mm -hmm. And that's why he also was the first one, one of the first one who tried out the 48 frames and the 68 frames. And that's why Ang Lee, when he saw that the 68 frames, also thought, wow, that is the best way to do it. Now I feel no flicker anymore. Now mm -hmm. the image is sharp. Uh, now you don't have... Uh, 
blur and and he also had other techniques like like he he, he shot with a full open shutter and decided to shutter later hmm. and and that is a te technology that's only from the last years now all these elements together makes the possibility to make 3d really good hmm. and 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 um, it's not a game changer the game changer was the 3d to start with it in the first place but this is simple we have a little dip and it come it will come back mm -hmm. if the film um, I didn't see the whole film but if the film is what he does normally uh, crouching tiger uh, mm -hmm. uh, and dragon the crouching tiger dragon <laughs> film <laughs> well, what a success successful film my life uh, uh, my life of, life of pie is an unbelievable success worldwide why well, it is a small independent film idea that mm -hmm. is that is become an unbelievable financial success for the studio. So that's why he could could make this film, could could ask for these possibilities. But they believe him. Well, he himself says, "Now I don't talk to my studi the studio to tell them that because I don't know shit. I don't know anything about what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. and I just invent and react on what comes to mm -hmm. me, the questions and the answers I have, mm -hmm. and, uh, and 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 I respect it. No risk, no future." <laughs>